I felt that some of the questions coming from Charlie were v needed um, an expansion in Spanish. Um, I also felt that the call went pretty smooth. Um, the The friend who was answering the questions um, was giving us a good explanation and gave us time to add to some of this um, answers where we still need some expansion. Um, Spanish has the challenge that you begin a sentence and then everything else after that sentence is implied. But we, as an interpreter, I felt I had to add a few things that were being said at the beginning, like a yes, no answer or an entity or the topic that we were talking about. When when the friend was talking about the class, you can join. You can join what? You can join the class. You can ask questions there. You can ask questions in the class. You can practice there. You can practice in the class. So I would have to add what she's talking about at certain points, or um, she would go back and forth between the interview and compared to what they're going to do in the class. So I made a point to put the interview on my left and then the class on my right and keep going back and forth so we have a comparison of what's going to happen here, then you'll be comfortable there. As a trilingual interpreter, the, um, the challenges that I face are foreign accents. Um, our callers will call international, and we would have several people in one line. And that's a big challenge. We don't have a team where we can show two or three people on one phone. So we have the deaf user. We connect, and they keep passing the phone to every single family member if they're calling grandmother who's celebrating her birthday. So we have the challenge to set up that where who's talking, what's going on. Or we have the situation where they have, we have the deaf user, they call somebody local in the United States, and they're talking, I don't know, siblings. They want to call mom who is somewhere else. So they have this going conversation that goes really fast back and forth, and they keep passing the phone to different people within those set the, within those houses and then to the deaf users sometimes they're just lost who's saying what <laughs> that's a big challenge for us and not having a team for it <laughs> when i started vrs i didn't know anything i didn't know what to expect and now that I sort of know what to expect because every call is different, they might have similarities, but things come up and they're different. Um, that's important for me to keep, keep up with news in the world. What's going on? Maybe I know that it's the World Cup and they're going to be calling about the teams that are playing. And that's happening next year, by the way. And then <laughs> maybe... Um, Maybe there is a tornado in Puerto Rico, and they're calling. And the name of the tornado, how is it pronounced in Spanish? How is it spelled in English? So I need to know what's going on in the world, what's going on in, in other countries, their news. They talk about going to the polls and vote. For whom? The names, the last names of these candidates. I need to know who they are, how to spell them. And we should expect these type of calls because they want to know what's going on back home or they want to know what's going on in other countries or they want to know. I need to familiarize myself with nicknames. Tito, Checho, Pepe, all those things are nicknames we need to know. They're either male or female. We need to know that. Being a trilingual interpreter has a lot of good feeling after we finish the job. Um, 
there is a lot that we never see unless we are in the trilingual setting and we get involved in very intimate type of conversations with family members and their issues. And I think we need to become very sensitive and, and, and know that this might happen. We cannot be part of the scene and just pass out because I saw something <laughs> or, you know, you need to keep it together. And also, as a trilingual interpreter, being a native speaker of Spanish and having a short conversation with the Spanish speaker will give her the sense that we are connected. I'm there to support you. They need to trust me. That's very important with the Latino community. The trust is not going to be shown through my skills. I don't have to show them my skills yet. I have to show them that I'm there to do my work, that I'm a professional, and uh, that they can count on me for this communication situation. And then also try to have a connection with the, with the deaf person. So they know if I have a question, I'm open to, come on, tell me, is there anything you're not comfortable with? So I guess with all of the members of this group, I need to establish a connection, try to be there early so I can do that. VRS doesn't give us that, but facial expression does it, where I can smile and say, I'm here, or I can, I don't know, be a little bit more warm with my expressions. To translate that warm, that sense of you can trust me with the hearing color, we can add things like, un momento, señora. Si, sí, señora, to show respect. We have so many words in Spanish that can show respect. Como dijo, perdón, no le entiendo, puede hablar un poquito más alto. All those ito, ita, all those things, they add a little bit of warmth to the language, and you can, you can gain their trust. Oh, claro que sí, ajá, uh -huh. mm -hmm. gracias, señora. Buenos dias, senora. All those things. Mm -hmm. Fillers.